Welcome back everybody. In this episode we buy a boat. Well, not quite. Our budget doesn't quite stretch as far as these, but just up the road is a four drive super center and they've got a brand new product which might just fit the bill. Let's go up and check them out. So this everyone is Adventure King's new 2.85 metre fishing kayak. Now love or hate the four wheel drive super centre, you have to admire them constantly going out there and sourcing new products for their outdoor adventure lineup. And this here represents great value. It competes with the likes of the Primal Dragon fishing kayak you get from BCF or the kayak to fish next gen 9 that are all around that 2.7 to 2.8 meters long. This is the largest of the three being 2.85 meters long. It's 83 centimeters wide and 31 centimeters deep. It's a little bit on the hefty side as most of the King's products are being 26 kilos. The next gen 9 for example is 20 kilos and I'm pretty sure the Primal Dragon is around about the 22 kilos. So that extra bit of heft does make it quite hard to get on top of a high vehicle if that's what you got, most of us do. So loading it up onto the roof racks is a little bit tricky. But it's a very sturdy kayak and it comes with a few extras that the others don't provide. So let's run through the features and I'll show you what it's all about. It doesn't come in a box, it comes very well packaged in this general form. Now up the front you've got one very large hatch. In the middle you have a lockable and reasonably water resistant rectangular hatch that you can stow some of your fishing gear or things that you don't want to get too wet. However, I think with all these cheaper kayaks, it's better to have a wet gear bag for those things that you don't want to get damaged while you're out on the water. Now moving into the workings of the kayak, you have these two hatches that I mentioned at the start. You have a nice flat area that you can maneuver around inside the kayak. And one thing that I wasn't 100% sure on were these adjustable footrests. Your standard kayak normally has the molded sections which gives you a real limited range of how you can sit within the kayak. These footrests however provide a whole series of adjustments to make it as comfortable as possible. They also mean that you don't have so much bulk protruding into the middle of the kayak. So I think these will be quite good, they feel quite sturdy and once you've set them up they should be a pretty good way of making yourself comfortable while you're paddling along, getting to your favorite fishing spot. But one thing that really, really impressed me about our kayak in this price point is they provide these two sliding rails. So what this allows you to do is to fit a whole series of aftermarket accessories to your kayak without having to retrofit these rails in at a later date. So you have the obligatory cup holder in the middle center console area which keeps your drink all nice and secure while you're paddling along. And we've got a typical 360 degree rod mount, which is very common on most fishing kayaks that you get these days. What Kings do provide is the 360 degree mount that you get on a lot of kayaks. Now, if you even look at the product literature from Kings, this doesn't sit in properly. To mount it into the kayak, you put it in at a 90 degree angle so that it slides through the first lock. From there, you can then position it how you want and do the final lockdown into this mount inside the kayak. The second rod holder they provide as part of this kayak kit is a star point style, which goes into a mount that you can position on either of these sliding rails. 
the guides are already located so it's a simple case of getting your mount I like to locate it so that the workings, the locking pin and how you open the weather seal onto the mount is accessible from the inside of the kayak. You simply position over the, the guide tabs on whatever side you wish to mount it and fix it in. They provide an Allen key, but if you've got your own tools, it's a four mil. And I tend to do it up so you can still slide it around and adjust it to get it into the right position. And then it's a simple case of just slotting in the rod holder and locking it on. You can turn the rod holder around to whatever position you wish and this can be adjusted on the fly. This rod holder has a lock so that when you've positioned your rod in you can lock it on so it doesn't come flying out if you're lucky enough to snag a fish. The front hatch secures by way of a very simple bungee cord similar to the seat and the rod holder. The one con I would raise on both of these hatches is that they're not the round style. So that limits the inbuilt accessories that you can get for a lot of the round style hatches where you can get tackle boxes, gear bags and all that sort of stuff that is actually suited to those proprietary round holes. But from a flexibility point of view, I much prefer the extra space you get from these rectilinear shapes that allows you to stow a whole series of different things in here that aren't necessarily those round proprietary styles that you get from the likes of Freak Sports, BCF and all those. Now speaking of Freak Sports, my discovery that the side rails and mounting point for the rod holder or starport design led me on a whole world of discovery in regards to accessories that you can fit to these kayaks. They essentially use the Rail Blazer starport design. So you can buy a whole series of different mounts. It's a real shame they didn't provide two mounts that you could fit to either side of the kayak. So the OCD in me means I've bought a pair of mounts which I'll fit as my main mounts onto the kayak which will still use the King's rod holder. But you can also get things like adjustable camera mounts extension poles so you can mount things up in the air or away from you like lights cameras and all that sort of stuff you can get a whole series of different accessories to go onto these kayaks so stay tuned there'll be a future episode where we delve into all of this as well as some propulsion ideas which led to the purchase of this kayak in the first place now as we walk around the kayak there's a few other little features that you might want to know there's four inbuilt rod holders with weather caps keep it all nicely sealed up when they're not in use two in front of the seat two behind you've got your grab handles one on either side there's also a grab handle on the front and rear of the kayak to make it easy to manipulate and move around you also have a number of little hooks scattered around the kayak so you can securely tie things down do whatever you want with them make sure your gear doesn't fall off while you're out in the water and having fun now at the rear of the kayak, you've got your two inbuilt rod holders with the weather protection caps on them. You've got your bungee style rear storage area, which allows you to put in big bulky areas like a cooler bag or something like that, or a wet bag. You've got a handy grab handle on the front and rear. And you've also got a rear drain bung so that you can, from time to time, check to make sure there's no water inside the kayak. The Primal kayaks seem to have an issue with water ingress inside. A lot of reviews and comments note that you need to drain their kayaks quite frequently. So double check that. And you also have two rubber bungs in this rear storage area and two rubber bungs in the front area of the kayak so that you can drain it out once you get it back out of the water or if something happens to go wrong. The lightweight aluminium seat removes for transport and storage and folds down to a nice compact design. It's got these tethering straps so you can adjust the angle of the backrest to suit how you like to paddle and fish to make it very, very comfortable. Now it's got a, a woven mesh padded base and backrest, which really should dry out reasonably quick compared to a neoprene type cover, which will stay wet for quite a lot longer. This seat also secures by the way of a bungee into the kayak so it's all nicely secure when you're out on the water kayak comes with a nice lightweight two-piece paddle or oar which secures onto the side of the kayak like most of them via a bungee cord as well 
Let's get the kayak out in the water and see what it does. That's the maiden voyage done. Value for money, I really don't think you can go past these. They've got everything you want for a beginner kayak. It's not the most stable kayak in the world due to its size, but that's something you'll get used to over time. My one word of advice with any kayak, but in particular these cheaper kayaks, is make sure you give them a really good wash out when you get home with fresh water. Get rid of any salt contaminants off it and dry it off. And if you can, store it out of the sun, as the sun will really, really quickly deteriorate all the plastics and rubbers on these kayaks. While this kayak is great for fishing, it's also nice and relaxing just to be able to paddle along and enjoy the scenery. So it's a nice, affordable and cheap way of getting you out on the water before you can buy that boat. So thanks for watching guys. Please like the video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We're so close to the thousand mark, it's not funny. And put some comments below on what you think about these kayaks and whether or not they'll last the test of time. Anyway, I've got some paddling to do, so I'm going to get it back out in the water and enjoy the weather while it's nice. Thanks for watching. Get out there, stay safe, and have fun.